No one's really expecting that song. Out of I have, and, and let me say this without any type of pride. If you're watching this, we just listened to Who Let the Dog Out. You missed it. Um, no, they heard it. They heard it. Good. Who let the dog out? Well, yesterday, we had one of those moments, and I, I don't know about you guys. I hope it's not just a pastoral thing. I hope it's a believer thing. That when I see things and they unveil before me, I see God in all things. I can take the worst situation, and I'll, I'm thinking, there's a sermon there. I can see something that people are like, oh, I, I watch a video or a movie on TV, and you know, my family's going, this is stupid. I'm like, there's a whole sermon there. I got a whole thing there. Started watching Dune last night, and I'm like, oh, there's a whole political sermon I can speak on about a whole bunch of stuff. Well, yesterday, we had a little event, a real-life event. When I started pastoring, um, there's a book that I got, and somebody gave it to me in my first, first year of being a preacher. Pastor, and it said um, sermon illustrations. And it's like a thousand and one sermon illustrations. Like, ah, I need a little help for something this time. No, life is a sermon illustration. Yesterday, a modern parable on the dog. Maybe you'll remember this. This is going to be a short sermon that's going to be a review for some of you. Some of you are going to go, I've heard that kind of in a review understanding. But there are some people that don't know the basics. Pastor Kevin went down to Durant when he took over that church at was Pleasant Grove First Baptist when he became the pastor. He always realized that people didn't know the basics, right? Some of us grew up in Sunday school. Not everybody did. Some of us have attended church and we skipped the whole salvation part of it. we got to get back to a basic understanding of this. The dog parable. I've already told Pastor Kimberly, my wife back there, and Rachel who was with us, she cannot speak to this. I'm going to tell the story, and if it's wrong, you're just going to go with it. They know the true story. So this is the story. Yesterday, we got out, and we were going to have one of our Saturday morning adventures. We got in my truck, and we're driving down, or headed up Turkey Creek Road. And there's a dog. I don't know how many of y'all see dogs that are kind of wandering around right there. And it had a cop, it had a leash actually around its neck, which was impeding its ability to move, because here's now, he's got a leash, so we know somebody kind of owns it. It's not just a stray. Uh, we're, we're looking at it, and all of a sudden, you know, here we are, we're driving. Oh, look at that. And we're going, nah, Pastor Kimberly, stop, 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 stop. You gotta stop. We're like, no, it's kind of like a little hound dog. What if it gnaws your leg off? And I'm like, well, that'd be kind of sermon, different sermon story. But uh, so we turn back around, and I hear my my brain. What are we gonna do with it? Rachel and I look at like, We gonna help the dog? And I'm like, what are we gonna do for that dog? What are we gonna do? We're gonna grab it, and then what? It bites us, and then we gotta call him rabies shots. So we pull back around, and it's right there at that little um, convenience store at the back side of Walton Lake, and he's now there. And Kimberly goes out. Listen, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be absolutely honest. Weaker vessel, this pastor, this man, you get out there. That's your choice. You get out there and do that. Not one part of me got out of the vehicle. Because why? Because I might need to drive off and get her help if something bad happens. So. <laughs> Look, she's being attacked. I'll go get you help, baby. I'll be back, I promise. Um, she gets out and the dog kind of, you can tell it was one of those loving dogs. He wasn't scary. He kind of came right up to her and and all of a sudden, she's got it, and what, if, what do we do with it now, right? The dog came to her. It's got the leash on it. What do we do? We're going to walk around with it? We're going to put him in the truck? No, we ain't put him in the truck. I don't know what we're going to do. All of a sudden, she's trying to help him out. She said, at least let me get the, the leash off of him, because now he's dragging at He's going, and he looked like he might have gotten hit a little bit. Yeah. Look, he had a little stumble on the back hip, a little hitch there. She gets it off. I mean, just a loving little dog. And, no, and she, I know she was looking at me with those eyes. No, we ain't getting another dog. Man. Come on, no, we ain't getting another dog. And all of a sudden, about that time, do we have anything to feed him? Because you want to help him? We had Bueno. I'm like, you're going to give the dog Bueno? She had the dog Bueno. He ate Bueno. So now he's sugared up, and, and he's sitting there. And about that time, a gentleman comes out of the convenience store. And all of a sudden, the dog kind of wanders towards him. Kimberly wants to kind of go over and say, here's the story. We just saw this dog. And, and all of a sudden, next thing you know, this guy, we're sitting in the truck, and I'm looking from my viewpoint and not asking her yet. But all of a sudden, the guy's like, okay, he goes around and opens his passenger door. I'm like, what are you doing? He's trying to get the dog in the, in the car. And I'm like, okay. That guy did the, what I said I would do. And then Kimberly said, oh, I've got his leash. So she goes and gets his leash. And she comes in there trying to get it on the leash, uh, around the dog's neck and everything, and, and put it on. And they do eventually. And the guy has some food. And, and all of a sudden, he starts walking back. And we're like, what's going on here? Kimberly, come here. She got in the truck. That was the gentleman's brother's dog. 
And he happened to be right there. The dog happened to be running loose. We happened to pull up. And he took the leash. And as we were pulling away, walked across the street and took him back to his brother's house. Back to his home. And we're sitting there going, that didn't play out exactly like I thought it was going to happen. Because we've gotten to a point where, and I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be honest with you, there's not anything else we can do. We're not going to pick him up. And then people say, what do you do? Call the animal thing. By the time they get him, he's run off. Or we don't. And if you watch the SBA, SBCA commercials, which make me cry, I don't want to send them there. I have no And you find yourself sometimes, you want to help. You do what you can. And then something else greater happens, takes care of the whole situation, and the dog's taken home. And all of a sudden, here's Pastor Randy, I'm like, oh, that's great. Parable, right? So here's the dog parable. A parable is written to be an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. Jesus himself taught us parables because he knew that we didn't know all the things of the Father. They didn't have Bibles when he sat around the, the lakeside. When the 5,000 came to him or when he shared parables, he didn't say, turn to page this. He didn't open up the hymnal. He didn't go through and say, did y'all watch the video? He didn't talk about <laughs> David Jeremiah or any of the big... He didn't have any of that to say. So he looked at the crowd and he said, let me share something that y'all might remember. Probably you leave here, you might not know a, a one scripture today, but you're going to know about that dog story. When I taught school, I always try to get something that the students could relate to, because if you can relate to it, you remember it. The dog parable has a whole lot more meaning if you look at it from the approach of the gospel. Let me tell you about that dog. In Luke 15 and 32, it talks about the dog. But we had to celebrate and be glad because his brother of yours was dead and is alive again. But he was lost and now he's found. That dog is the lost dog. We look around in our world and we say that all the time. In the church world, I don't know where we grew up and we did grow up this way. Y'all walked in the door, guess what? Oh, you're found. Everybody else out there, they're lost. The people I don't get to talk to are lost. The people I need to share with are lost. That dog was as lost as he could be. He was less than 100 yards from his house, but he was completely lost. He thought he knew where he was, but he was lost and just wandering. And not only was he lost and wandering, but he was burdened. And he had something around his neck that was holding him down and pulling him back. Listen, this lost world that we talk about outside the four walls, we come together in the mighty name of Jesus and we talk about them. They are being bound and pulled down by things that they don't even understand. They are wandering, and I'm going to tell you the saddest part of not believing in Jesus is this. They think they're absolutely free. They will tell you on this side of the wall that I don't want to be a church member. I don't want to join Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior because it's too good for me. Let me, I am free as can be. Why do I need all those rules and regulations on my life? Let me, there's no freedom until you understand the true freedom that comes from Christ. And they are completely walking around. And listen, all they're looking for, and I'm telling you this, and I, I need you to get past the fact that they want to be lost. No one wants to go to hell. If you haven't looked at her sign out front, it used to say heaven help us, but the P flew up, and it just says heaven and hell, ATL. I'm telling you, they will, if you walk up to somebody, try this for an instant. Hey, would you like to know about Jesus Christ? I ain't got time for that. Would you like to know how to be saved? Uh, would you like to know how to go to hell? Uh, do you want to go to hell? Why are you way so rude? That's mean. Why would you say that? It's the alternative. That dog didn't realize that when he pulled away from that home that he was now on his own. The lost world are on their own. The way we approach them is going to dictate what they do now. If Kimberly would have got out of that car and just screamed at that dog, he might have been there. He might have run up, or he would have just ran off. Nine times out of ten, when you scream about what people are doing wrong and why they're not who they're supposed to be, they just run off. Listen, if somebody comes into my office and starts telling me all the things I've done wrong, I kick them out of my office. You, you can leave now. I don't need that. I don't need you to do that. I have the conviction of the Holy Spirit. I don't need that. So that dog was sitting there. He thought he was where he was getting free, and he was lost. But all of a sudden, he was found, and Kimberly had to approach him in a way that he would respond to her. Here's the approach. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. Nowhere in that does it say, I was lost, and you preached a sermon to me. Nowhere in that does it say, I really didn't know what I was supposed to be doing, so you gave me a track 
Nowhere in there does it. All those things, they help, and they are, there are ways to get to it, but a lot of time, people and that dog, he was just hungry. As soon as, bueno, he was good. He was like, man, I didn't know what I'm going to get today, but at least I got a candy bar. Bueno. If y'all didn't know, Kimberly raised her hand. That's a candy bar. That's her favorite candy bar. And it's all good because it's all bueno, right? They're bueno. They used to start out in little packs. Now they have 20 packs, like a, a shotgun pack or something. But she eats bueno. I was thirsty and he gave me something to drink. Listen. The lost world just wants to be fed. It's amazing to me that we will say to Christian believers, are you hungry for the word? Are you hungry for the gospel? Do you thirst for the water that you never have to be thirsty about? We, we have all those things that we preach about and teach about. They're hungry and they don't even know what they're supposed to be eating. They're hungry and they don't even know what's good for them. They're putting things in to their feed their hunger and their starvation that is actually detrimental to their health, their welfare, and to their family, and to everything they own and everything they know. So instead of approaching them with all the things that they're doing wrong, let's go to them and say, hey, are you hungry? Let me feed you. And she did that. And that dog responded. He just responded in the way she approached. Look at Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, supposed to be our example. Look at the numerous times that he entered in the presence of a crowd, a mob, and he never got riled up. He never went into a long uh, sermon. Even in the Sermon on the Mount, which we know is Jesus on the lake side, they are blessings. Blessed are the poor, blessed are the meek. They're the Beatitudes. So we as the gospel, we as the body of Christ should approach people and try to reach them right where they are. Love them where they are. Pastor Fred always said. The dog, the approach, the leading. Jesus answered, said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. All of a sudden, as that friend that he was recognized, that friend of the brother, the brother of the owner, came up to him. He was able to get that around his neck, and he was able to lead that dog. And that dog didn't fight the leading. That dog knew that that was somebody familiar to him. Once you introduce somebody to Jesus and he becomes familiar to them, they will allow the leading. They're not going to let somebody who's a stranger lead them. We teach our children from an early age, don't listen and talk to strangers. Byron, the story came to mind right there at the, the train station in Virginia, right? Drunk guy in the train station. And Byron and I were just little kids and everybody's going, stay away from the drunk guy. But he couldn't stop talking to us. He'd walk over and he would just shake our hand. How you doing, young man? And he'd shake our hand. As soon as he'd turn around, my aunt and mom would be wiping our hands with wipes and Lysol and everything else. That guy would take three feet out and he'd turn around. Hey, boys. And he'd shake our hand again. We would just wipe We washed our hands so many times that day. Listen, you should not be led by something that you don't understand or somebody you don't know. We say that's being led blindly. But the amazing thing is the song that we sing, The Amazing Grace, I once was blind, but now I see. The blind leading the blind. When you say the blind leading, you blind, leading the blind, you're saying that it's a bad situation. Nothing good comes out of the blind leading the blind. And all of a sudden we sit here and we look at him and that man took that dog who he recognized and he was going to put him in his car so he could drive him home. The dog didn't want to get in the car because he wouldn't even recognize the car, but he did recognize the guy. And once he did, he was right where he's supposed to be. Once you approach people and reach them where they truly are hurting, and you introduce them, listen, I've moved way past you guys going out and preaching sermons. I've moved way past you guys out screaming out at, at lost people. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to invite them to meet Jesus. I'm one of the few pastors probably here on a Sunday are going to say, I didn't say invite them to church. If that's the way you think they're going to see Jesus, invite them to church. If they have, if they have a phobia and they're not going to go in a building because a lot of people won't go into any place anyhow, don't invite them to church. Invite them to meet Jesus. You'll say to me, well, how does they know? If he can see it in you and they recognize him in you, then they're going to recognize him. As soon as he recognized that Kimberly was friendly and this guy was somebody with a familiar face, as soon as he recognized that, I'm good to be led. You have to introduce them to Jesus so they know who's leading them. Last thing was the homecoming. That dog, as we pulled away in our rearview mirror, we looked back and that man walked him right across the street. 
Like I said, they're not too far gone. That dog wasn't too far away. He is right around, and, and, and the lost people are just right around the corner from knowing Jesus Christ. <laughs> no one is too lost. Man, I know somebody is so bad, they'll never become a Christian. That's wrong. People that tell you, well, i got to get things right in my life before I come to church. That's wrong. People that say, I'm not in a place to be at church. They're right where they should be because they're in the place where God can use them and needs to reach out and touch their lives. The homeland, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me and my father's house for many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you I'm going there to prepare a place for you. He knew once that familiar face led him that he was going home. <clears throat> we spend our lives thinking about getting home. How many of you like vacations? I do. I love to go on vacation. We haven't had, have, had one in a while. When they stopped cruising, we used to do cruises once a year, maybe two a year, but we like to go and get away. But we always like what? Coming home. Coming home. There's no place like home. Click your heels, you guys. No place like home. Some of the kids are going, what? That's Wizard of Oz. We all don't know. There's no place like home. And our father did something amazing. He did something that many people don't understand and most of the world will never do for you. And that's prepare a place for you. Not, people will know, hey, you coming over to the house? Oh, uh, gotta get ready, ready. When y'all have guests come to the house, you do things a little bit different. Oh, very straight. No, we better get things ready for them. They're coming to visit. I can remember being in the military and every time I'd come home, I'd love coming home because we're going to go someplace I wanted to eat. We're going to do things. I mean, it was, it, it was homecoming. Churches have homecoming where they invite everybody back. I really, really want, and this is a little side note, I really want us to have a homecoming this year. I want us to figure that out because everybody knows somebody that grew up with us here at Hope Weaver and that some of our grown people have gone away. I want to try to figure out a way to get them all back together. But God in his love for you, whether you chose him, choose him or not, still prepared a place for you. The thing that breaks our Father's heart is the vacancies that will never be filled that He prepared a place for those to come. God didn't look at it and say, Oh, David accepted Jesus, let me prepare. No, He prepared a place before, before that. He didn't wait until you made the decision. You joined the team, let me give you a shirt or a jersey. He is already prepared a place. And as that dog went home on that leash, Guided by that familiar face, he went right back to where he came from. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. I love that. It goes back to, I don't wipe the dust off because it might be a loved one, right? I'm telling you. As Miss Diane said, with Angel, if you ever experience, and many of us in this room have, a true home going, when you can sit in the midst of physical loss and realize that person is in a better place for all eternity and it's beautiful and it's accepting and it's understanding and it is a celebration, you realize who he is. You're praising his name. That dog was just happy to be home. Lost, but the last slide there, Sammy, he was lost at one moment, but he was found he was hungry, but he was fed. He was wandering, but now he's headed home. Listen, it's not a hard thing. I don't ask y'all to come up here and preach a sermon. I just ask you to live and love people with what they're dealing with so that you can invite them or introduce them to meet Jesus. Let him do the leading. Right? Can, can I get an amen? Where are you going? I love that. Come on up here. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> Remember, the only rule is don't drink my Polar Pop. <laughs> uh, if I can't get Polar Pop, I'm not going to <laughs> Oh my goodness, is this not intelligence right here? That's the difference between us and animals. I thought he was going to the step. Let's pray. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, we are truly thankful this day that even in our midst of rejection, despair, maybe even anger towards you. You're not plotting or planning against us. You're preparing a place for us. Lord, here's my prayer this morning that we, the believers in Jesus Christ, will take the moment to feed 
and help those who truly need to know you to invite them and introduce them to our Lord and Savior by our lives, by our walk and our talk. I pray that they can see that. So for my Christian brothers and sisters this morning, I just pray blessings over the opportunities that you'll set before them. But Lord, let's not forget the other side. For those who feel like that dog right now, that they're running free and all is good, I pray right now, Lord, that they'll stop, listen, and realize how great it is to be home, an eternal home that's prepared for all eternity. Lord, I just ask a blessing over those that don't know you this morning. If they come across this video, let this be the moment that I introduce them to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who went up on a cross, paid the ultimate price to pay a debt that I'll never ever have to pay or cannot repay, so that I too can defeat death, that I can rob the grave, that I can walk for all eternity with my Lord and Savior. We call it heaven, Lord God. It's got other names, but at least I'm with you. So Lord, I just pray that those that don't know you this day, even if everything's going perfectly good in their life, I pray today they make a decision to trust you so that their lives can be eternal as ours are. Lord, I thank you for this morning and this message. I thank you for that dog. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.